you want to keep your for at the end of the day you want to keep your pressure forward. So like off the whistle, I like to just just get a jump, all right? And yeah, we're talking about Coach Pop's cradle, but I might show a little bit of a variation that one of our All Americans, former All Americans, um, Pete Renda, he was really good with the leg in cradle too. It's pretty da 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 dangerous with it, right? But mainly off the start, like I said, I want to just get weight over the top of the guy. Um, so two easy hand holds to go to right away, just to keep weight down, is just I drape over the top and I'm coming uh, far ankle. Okay, I'm just here draping over the top. All right, and when you're coming to go cross face, I think the biggest thing is is I'd like to get a part of the elbow. Okay, if I can, the bone is is really creates a really good handhold as opposed to like here where it's, where I'm gonna slip. All right. If I can get high and take and take his arm away, great. I can still do the same thing from from his elbow bone. Okay, if that makes sense. All right. So off off the jump, whatever it is, I think just jumping to this is good because whatever he's gonna do, I'm gonna get weight down on him, and it's gonna be hard for him to move. So like I said, I'll drape, okay, and and pull this uh, this far leg, okay. And what I'm looking to do is I'm trying to get him. All right, to extend his leg out because I'm kind of pinching my hip. I'm pinching him with my hips. All right, I'm pinching him with my hips. And guys who know that a crate, yes, that, that a cradle is coming, they're going to try to post their foot out. They're going to try to wrestle back in. All right, okay. I stay tight here because I don't want him to shin wizard me off. Yeah, take that. Take that shit. Yeah. All right. So I kind of sink down on his hips. All right. So here, right off. Okay. And I'm pinching here. And all I'm looking to do. Okay, like I said, is get get the uh, get the elbow. Okay, and if I if I need to, I can come here to reinforce, but I have to stay stay tight with my hips because if I let go of the foot, he's gonna reach out, and that's fine. I don't worry about that right now. Some kids try to collect everything at the same time. I don't like that'll come later. Okay, so right away, like yeah, give me a feel here. That's what I want right there. Okay, I didn't quite get his elbow. All right, but that's what I want. Now what, I, what I'm looking for, and this is where Pat does a better job because he's longer, but I can still emphasize it. I'm gonna run my hips and I'm gonna take a big step because I don't care if he grabs my leg, all right? And at the same time, I'm just posting my hand down, okay? A longer guy, if you can get to his foot, great. And then you'll eventually slide up the knee. If you can get to the foot, great, okay? If you're not as long, posting at the knee is fine too, okay? But I'm looking to run and take a big step because I don't care if he grabs my leg. I don't. I'll sprawl here and just get my hips. But the big point is I have to create tension in order to get him tight, basically. All right? So tight, drape, I'm here. And sometimes some guys will go block and you can go near side scoop too. Because I can hop and create, create pressure, cross pressure with it as well. All right? So. Here right away, I'm jumping, I'm tight, I'm pinching. And again, like I said, if I'm gonna go uh, two hands to, the, to get the elbow, okay, I have to keep my weight tight, or my, my hips tight and my pressure forward. And I just get, you just get mean with it, okay? Get a hold of the elbow, okay? At this point, if the guy, yeah, the better guys, they'll try to wrestle, they'll try to whatever, post out. Again, post, and I just take a big step. Okay, because I don't care what he's gonna do. Okay, hands locked, weight in, get into the far side. Okay, at this point, really it's just getting tough with it and, and overwhelming the guy. But I think the big points are his, once I get to this side, what keeps him from, from getting cradled is this hand gets free, this arm comes out, you have to keep the arm. Because if he, if he gets it out and we end up here, I'm not rolling, okay? Um, the big thing too is that outside leg because now we have, he, has, he has a post on that side, okay? But really, I don't, I don't just want to sit. I can sit and take him back, but I want to actually overwhelm him. Okay. So again, great. I'm just, I'm just, basically, it's called a blanket ride, okay? Just blanket ride. 
Good. Yeah, wrestling. Take, take big step, big step. Find it. Get to this side. Sit, hips in. Once I get here, my bottom knee's in the side. Bottom knee's in the side. All right, again, like I said, a little bit of a variation. You can, off the whistle, okay? You can go pinch, where I go here, and I can scoop. Right here, so he wrestles. Same thing, I can keep this, turn, turn, turn. I can keep this elevated, and I can do the same thing. If you notice, I'm driving with my one leg in the mat, and I'm elevating here. Keeps weight across and down on it. Feel that? Yeah. Post. Okay. I can let go at that point. Take a big step. Because he might try to, what will happen is this guy tries to wrestle. I just post the mat. Big step. And take it. Okay. Again, I can hook right away. I can scoop near side scoop. Yes, and elevate. You already. Good wrestlers, yes, will try to run their hips back into you. That's fine. You just have to make sure you have this hook. Elevate. Punch. Got it. Okay. You can go leg in. Like I said, one of our All-Americans, Pete Brenda. Love to go, scoop, boot in, and he turn, 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 turn. He did a great job of getting cross pressure, really elevating, knees to the ceiling. And for him, what happens here is he'd ride trying to get a cross bar, and they'd stick a leg out. They'd turn into him, yep. Same thing, he'd catch, Go across, catch, post. Now once you get a cradle with the leg in, okay? The big thing is, hot, you, you have to figure out how to get your leg out, all right? Once I get to here, because I can't roll, I can't, can't post, I can't drive backwards on, okay? So for me, feeling this position, I like to extend my leg, okay? Extent, you feel what happened? Yeah. What did that just do? It flattened me. Because it, it doesn't feel good. So turn, turn, turn. <laughs> Leg in. Okay, like I said. You go cross pressure like you're going bar, cross bar, and I'll punch. And I'm driving the entire time off my back leg. Now, like I said, he's not, he's not, he's feeling it right now. Come up. Once I get to here, I'll extend my leg. Hips in. Now I can run. If there's more space, if there's more space, I got, got my boot in. If there's more space, I get to here. Okay. And I can take my leg out, great. Hip to hip. Run him and take him. Someone with a little more length. That's tight, that's a lot of pressure, guys. So again, drape, a hook, leg in. And again, I'll turn my knees to the surface, okay? Here chasing this right here. I'm either gonna take you through like Turk, okay? I'm gonna come over and grab a bar, all right? Or I'm gonna jam and just wrestle here. And th this one, if you can get to it, if you can get to the ankle, it's great because I don't have a leg to drive with right now. You can step out if you want with this leg, take it. Leg out, straighten your leg, get it out, and take him through. So you can see it turn.
elevate, again, hip pressure, so you're, you're, you widen your legs, your knees go to the, go to the ceiling. Punch. We're running. Now I'll straighten my leg. Straighten my leg, take it out, cradle. Okay, the only other thing that I'd say is to force the guy to step out, there's one other thing you can do, is I'll drape and I'll actually, I'll actually go deep to hold, but I'll come back to the near ankle. Because when I pick up the near ankle, how are you gonna wrestle here? See what happens? You're forcing, it, forcing him to play his hand. Now with the new rules, holding the ankle, they'll, there's a count now. So you have to be wary of that. In high school, I mean, you can get away with it, right? So I'll come here, wrestle, come back, and I'll pick this, turn, turn, turn. Pick this up, yeah, so here. There it is. Big step. If I had a foot longer arm, I could be able to touch the mat, but this is all I need. Run it. He grabs my leg. Doesn't matter. Pull. Take it. Create separation, knee on the side. Turns that near shoulder down. So again. I can pick this near side up. If he doesn't post his leg out, if he doesn't post his leg out and I'm gonna be on the count, say we're just talking college rules, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna force him, force his hand. I'll come back. That's a good point right there, turn. I had a good hold, I got him. But he stayed hunkered here. I'm gonna post behind his foot. I'm just going to walk, wrestle here. Feel that pressure. At the same time, I'm trying to collect the cradle. I'm arching in with my hips and I'm actually straightening him out. I'm arching in and he, was, he did have his knee underneath him, did. So I was here, bring your, bring your legs up, yes. So I was here, post it out, wrestle here. I'm extending, I'm hipping down too. Leg out. Awesome. Questions? Big thing, guys, to emphasize, I think, just from watching it, what I'm picking up is the understanding that there's a lot of uh, pressure in this blanket ride. There's a team up in Washington, uh, a high school team, U High. Um, they are really, like, they do a blanket ride, and it's all they do, and everybody knows it, but they're so good at lifting that ankle and giving pressure. Uh, man, they, they cradle everybody. It's Donnie Owens. Yeah. Yeah, and he's really good at teaching and getting that system in place for a blanket ride, and all these kids, as soon as the match starts, boom, boom, they hook ankle, and they blanket ride. They'll power half blanket ride. You know what I'm talking about? They'll power half. Blanket ride, so there'll be blanket ride, no power half far side. You guys know what I'm saying? Like this. They'll go like this. All right? And they'll be like this too. That head pops up at, while they're lifting, right? While they're elevating this, that head pops up, they go boom. They get that same thing, cross face to the cradle. But I think just the importance of that, like Adam does it so well, just where he's pressure, 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 pressure. You felt that I never just like relaxed. Kept my hips in. I never relax in there. They relax, they can they can push back. Because in, in honesty, uh, I wrestled.
Pat actually coached against me in the third place match at NCAAs one year. One of his guys had a really good run, cradled two guys at the national tournament, pinned them. One of them was in the quarterfinals of become an All-American, pinned the uh, two or three seed at the time or whatever it was, and pinned him, pinned Kyler Sanderson in the back door, and then we wrestled for third, and he chose top, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I chose bottom too. I chose bottom and he chose top. And I got away because I knew he was going cradle. And I just, talking about the, the flip side of how, how you're beating it, yes, I just went, I stuck my leg out, but I kept my head up. He tried to get here, and once he went cross face, I caught his hand, and I just held it. I actually have a picture where I'm holding it like this. And I held it until I got out. And that's the only way, and Pat's like, yeah, it's the only way you're gonna beat it, is if they actually get a hold of your hand. So knowing that, when I'm coming across and that guy's trying to catch a hand, do what you gotta do to, you're either getting it and punching and going, or if he's getting a hold of it, you're wrestling back onto his hips. Cause it, because you can you wrestle your way out if you get a hold of the hand, just knowing that. Uh, anything? Can you show me, can you just show me like right off the whistle if you're gonna wrestle match, like your blanket, right? Just yeah, what I'm doing? See it. Try to come up right off, I'll give you three taps and go. Notice how right away what I'm doing? Look at, you see my knee? Now, if you can see it, I'm already doing it. I just, reaction. My foot is planted, and you feel this? Yeah. What do you feel like you're gonna have to do? Yeah, it's hard to stand up though. Like, re realistically, you're gonna have to use your outside leg to drive me off of, your, yeah, off of this position. But I got you here, okay. And you're already giving me a cradle look, which is fine. Right here, I might go, I might throw, I might stay here, feeling this. I could lock a cradle, but I really want his arm. Because if his arm pops out, like if I get to here, this I'm fine. But if he gets to here, Post, don't wrap. Post. yeah, this is really hard. I can probably take a guy and wrestle here, but it's really hard once his L, once his arm pops out. If you have to go, because like the only good thing from here is like he just pushes you away and you give up one. So if his arm does pop, you can still take him wrestle here. Yeah, you have to stand, you have to kind of stand up and pick him up and take him backwards if the arm pops. And really, if you're teaching this and, and have a guy drill it, make him, make him wrestle in the position where the arm does pop because guys will, better guys will fight. They know like kind of weasel their way out and they get to a position where, all right, try to take me, you know? And you still can, you just got to do it right. You got to stand up and get, be a bully basically. But again, like you're saying, yeah, from a start, it's like you just, you're, just like it sounds, you're like, you're like throwing a blanket on. And I didn't get to his foot yet, but I got my pinch. Go from here. I just stayed patient, but what did you feel? Constant pressure. Constant pressure. I had to go leg in because you got your posture up pretty well. You got your posture, you, that's good, that's good wrestling. You got back into me. So in order for me to get you back to a position, you guys notice how he's a lot longer than me, but with positioning, I got my hand down past his, right by his ankle. What, what, you couldn't post out. I can't. You can't knee slide forward. Can't wiggle it out. You just post it. That allows me to just inch, inch, inch. Slap it. Really what creates that is, is the pressure. I mean, I could do it to all you guys so you can feel it. 
not obviously to the point of a cradle, you old man, I know. But when you feel the constant pressure with the hips, it like, it clicks. You don't give them anything really. So play around with it. I think, uh, I think it's dangerous. It is, especially for longer guys. You can kill guys with this. So, yeah. It's the same cradle with hits? Yeah. The leg in? Leg in. He has tremendous length. It's money for him. Who? Yeah, Wick. Wick. Shakur Rashid. Yeah, Wick is a Nolf too. They, get, they really get the elbow. They get the elbow bone, they rip it up, take it up. They, they almost take you up and run you to head to the knee, run head to the knee. But they, same thing, they'll step, step their leg up, they don't care. Because it doesn't matter, you're, if, you, if your elbow's caught, you're teaching like how to beat it, like you have to, you have to beat the elbow. If I know it's coming, I'm, I'm here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna knee slide and get my chest up. You know, it's, it's interesting, but. Hopefully, uh, when you're out front and they grab the leg, just tell the kids, don't panic. Don't panic. Because some kids, they, they're they like, panic. oh crap, like, and they circle back around, they lose the arm. And now you're really in trouble, especially if he keeps your leg and he can wrestle, turn. You know, yeah, so you're here, that's a great question. Because I'm here, I get to this point where I'm behind it, and even there, I'll step out. Yeah, yeah, grab it, that's fine. But don't forget, his, it's his arms versus your hips. His arm versus your hips. There's no way he should ever win. If he steps up, tries to, tries to wrestle to it, I'll step even further. Because in, in order for him to get to my leg, he has to step up to drive to get the corner. Thanks. But if you didn't have so much hip pressure, then maybe it'd be a different story. It would be. So much hip pressure, like I can barely even grab your leg. Yeah, you felt that. Yeah. It's almost like you're anticipating a guy grabbing your leg as soon as you step. Just throw your hips into him. It doesn't slow the process at all. You know, or I should say it slows the process. It doesn't stunt it. It doesn't stop you from doing, getting where you want to get, you know? So, Adam, it's a great question. What's, uh, we're, we got you, so I'm a smart camper. I'm gonna take advantage uh -huh. of you, so. What's the number one, number one thing you guys are, are looking for from your feet from all your guys? Varies from kid to kid, but you know when you're working with your kid, dude, when you're working with um, you know some of your NC state finalists, you know national finalists, um, what, what's that look like? Kind of maybe a go-to attack or something you guys are big believers in? Um, or maybe you, you're a big believer. So guys that are currently on the team, yeah. focusing on that, I think building to their strengths and a guy, a guy like Hayden Hiley, he. Everybody kind of knows his one attack, so just creating more offense from one or two other positions. He has a really nice high crotch, and people just think about he's got a really nice underhook and dominates with it, even like throws upper body, you know? But he has a really nice high crotch, and so just continuing to grow on, on those areas that, that they need some growth. Because you have an attack to both sides of the body, you're pretty dangerous. If you can. Uh, sometimes he will. He'll, guys will chase and he'll pull and post at that point. Like he'll chase, 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 and beat the head, and then come out post and look for it. So show that real quick. So like he'll chase. He'll, he goes. He's left the underhook. So he'll chase. He'll chase. And guys now are just they're staying away. He'll he'll beat them up, pull and up. There he's really looking for them to post on the far side. Lefty high C. Because if he doesn't throw you by and get to it or beat you up with this, he's really, and I keep telling him this, like you're gonna create offense out of your underhook. Don't just stay one side that you're constantly looking for, constantly looking for. Yeah. And part of it's like put their they wanna, they don't know what to do at this point. They wanna back out and just just put him down. Yeah. Just snap him down, put him under. Yeah. You know? Um, this is big, I think, guys, for high school wrestling. And the reason I think this is because we get in over-unders, high school kids get in over-unders a lot. I had a kid ask me today, he's one of our better kids in camp, he said, Coach, I get in the over-under, um, what are my other options out of my over-under? Like, 
And what's cool about this is if you watch Adam with his underhook hand, that's actually becomes his attack hand. So he's underhook, and the guy's the guy's posted on the far side. His his underhook comes out of underhook, goes to his attack hand. You can one more time yeah. so they can see it. So watch so, this. Here, the guy's posting. That underhook drops. The underhook drops to the high C. Like I love that. That's uh, uh, James Green's big on that right now. Where. He's underhook and he'll drop his underhook hand to the far side high C, which is sweet. Yeah, I think kind of breaking it back down to like the high school level and being successful before I go back to his question, I think find a couple ties that work well for guys. And I'll say this, like we spend with our college guys two, three weeks with just hand fighting, two, three weeks with just bottom, two, three weeks with just top. And we're doing it the whole time. I mean, this last four weeks or so, four or five weeks, our guys, all they've been doing is working, pulling a guy down to a front head and creating offense, scoring on defense. Everything's from beating a guy's head up. Club snap, head cradle, pull him to the mat, uh, underhook move, pull him under, just all these situations where we're from the same series, but we've been doing it for four or five, five weeks. And guys, it gets it gets monotonous, but all of a sudden you see guys in the room starting to use it, and then you start to see them use it in competition. You know, can't work something for one day and think it it sticks, especially at the high school level, not just the college level. You know, so I think focusing on like Levi saying, like learn learn an underhook, teach a guy an underhook, get him good there because it's a dominant position. Teach a guy a, a Russian, it's a dominant position. Teach a guy uh, something from a baseball tie. It slows the match down. You know, kind of know your athlete, but at the same time, if you can teach a guy like one or two ties, okay, and then create some offense from there, you know, have him go to it, go to it, go to it. A guy like Hayden, we're having to go to like develop his offense now because he's so good there that guys have to defend it. They have to beat it. They have to like do something. So now when they're going there, it's just part of chain wrestling and, and a higher level of wrestling, figuring out an attack to the other side or put them underneath or whatever. But I think breaking it down for, for even beginners, just be relentless on, no, we're going back here. We're, we're working two on one, working two on one, working two on one. And then all of a sudden they're drilling and all of a sudden then they're hitting it live and in a match. And it's like, now you, you, you develop a skill set. You know, break it down. Fundamental wrestling is so big. Like, you get to college, like, oh, you know, this guy's got this move, and this is all exciting. It's exciting, but it's because things happen so fast because the fundamentals are, are really good. You know, and going back to like a guy like Michael Machiavelli won a national title for us. Guys don't really. A lot of people don't know his backstory. But yeah, he won a national title. Um, started wrestling in ninth grade, which is to, to in itself like you do the math and you're like. That's like eight years, nine years only that he spent, compared to some people that spent double that amount of time. You know, one North, Car one North Carolina state title, had a losing record after two years in college. So at that point in your career, you're like six years in, you're, you know, you wouldn't expect a whole lot from a guy that's under 500. But he just, just relentless in, in learning technique, gaining ground, because he was hungry, he was fresh to the sport. You know, took a year, redshirted. Next year, made a huge jump, lost in the round of 12. And even then, the next year, he had taken some losses, lost in the conference finals. The guy he eventually beat in the national finals. But he just continued to believe in a process and, and slowly getting better. And that goes back to, you know, his his. That's why I love this camp. It's it's Kaizen. You know, he he is the definition of Kaizen. Just. To this day, is like in a room. We have to kick him out, you know, because he he'd run through a brick wall, you know. And th those are the types of kids that you find that just want to get better. You just run with them, you know, because they're the guys that, that want to be in the room. They're the guys that that want to be be on the podium, wanting to progress, you know. And those are the kids that create opportunities for themselves. And he's like a poster child for us because he's stubborn as hell, but that's 